Aloha. This is the state of the state of Hawaii. Welcome to the show. I'm Stephanie Stoll Dalton, your host for this show. And our show title is Hawaii's Student Achievement Lowest Due to COVID. And the reading and math learning is steeply declined. So we have some serious topics to discuss this evening. And uh, that we're going to lead off with finding out about the current assessments by Hawaii State uh, Department of Education and by the U.S. Department of Education that reveal COVID's drastic impact on American students' learning and Hawaii's plan with federal resources to regain uh, students' achievement. So we have actually two topics to cover. So the um, the learning condition of students and then the, the resources that are there in a generous amount to, to make a difference for that and to, to restore uh, Hawaii's uh, education and student achievement. Well, um, Hawaii's own uh, published school uh, data reports indicate that there is serious and significant learning loss among elementary and secondary students. Uh, Hawaii um, Department of Ed reports that up to 53% of elementary students and over 61% of middle school students tested one or more grade below level in uh, English language arts. And in math, more than 60% scored uh, below their grade level. Now, Hawaii's serious learning loss that is reported in uh, Star Bulletin and other um, texts um, is affirmed by the U.S. Department of Education's uh, peak new first look at uh, je with just released data from an assessment known as the, Na the Nation's Report Card. And that national data showed the largest declines observed in 50 years of administering an as this assessment. Uh, in, in the nation's student achievement. And for Hawaii, for example, that means that the, a nine-year-old student, typically a fourth grader, had a, a, the, a larger slip in uh, reading and language arts um, in 30 years. And it was also showing that there was the, the first decline in math scores ever. So, to make up this loss of learning in uh, our state and across the nation, the U.S. Congress over the past two years has all, has been trying to provide the resources to make um, schools uh, good again and open them up again and make them safe, uh, which is what I mean by good. And they have done all of this uh, for all the states, but for Hawaii, um, this state has received a uh, close to, in total over the two years, a billion dollars for educators to use to keep students healthy and safe and, and to recover from the pandemic's learning losses and to uh, soothe their social and emotional wounds, if not repair them. So this show is uh, about recognizing our students' uh, academic um, and social emotional conditions, which are very sensitive and serious, and um, trying to understand how the state plans, budgets, and operationalizes the generous one-time federal funding to restore student learning and family confidence uh, in, in the schools and teachers. And we have a knowledgeable guest here tonight to discuss how address how to how Hawaii addresses this formidable and daunting task. And Dr. Sherry Nakamura is director of the nonprofit advocacy group, the Hui for Excellence in Education, or um, the He'e Coalition. She follows in this work with her organization, um, Hawaii's governing agencies like the Department of Education, legislature and the Board of Education, and others as they plan, budget, and operationalize approaches to improve schools' capacity to restore and assist um, the students' learning. So welcome, Sherry, to the State of the State. Yes, thank you, Stephanie. I'm so happy to be here again. Well, pleasure to have you. Um, and uh, I know that um, 
you've been quoted many times in Star Bulletin and Civil Beat, and I did find a quote where you said, we would like to see the money get down to the schools as soon as possible. So I thought I'd ask you, who, what have you found out about that in your tracking and, um, and um, studying of what the state's doing to make that happen? And, and how is it happening? So can you t start off with telling us a little bit about that? Right, well, maybe I can uh, go from sort of our data in Hawaii. Uh, the available data looks at pre-pandemic smarter balance assessment. That is the summative assessment that uh, measures a student's proficiency uh, from one year to the next. So because of COVID, we missed a year. 1920, 2019, 2020, but we do have results from 2018, 2019, and 2020 and 2021. So you can imagine uh, for English language arts and math and science, all students' uh, percent proficiency declined. Um, all students, I heard you say all, all. students, yes. Um, but for uh, the subgroups which are economically disadvantaged uh, special students receiving special education english learner and certain ethnic groups like native hawaiian students and um, uh, pacific islander students um, in some cases the decline was greater so they declined further um, than all students so we did have decline and uh, it was um, more widespread, in particular in math and science, um, from pre-pandemic to post-pandemic. So it is true, the federal government has uh, provided close to a billion dollars um, for um, recovery, uh, for health and safety, as well as to address learning loss. And plans have been made and uh, shared with the Board of Education. Um, but we find that a lot of these plans are quite broad and general and we're not quite sure um, exactly how these funds are being utilized at the school level um, and we're not sure whether or not there's progress being made so this is the kind of transparency we continue to ask the department and the board um, you know the to to the department's credit uh, they do provide monthly financial statements um, so we can see how the monies are being expended. It's just that the categories are so broad that we're, we're not sure uh, exactly what is being done in these broad categories and whether or not, you know, specific strategies are being used to target um, the subgroups that uh, have been disproportionately impacted by the pandemic uh, yeah. and whether they're they're. Um, they're helping or not. Well, I saw that the department is required to provide the Board of Education. That's where the report goes with a monthly expenditure report. Well, sure. actually, it is on the Hawaii Department of Education website. If you do a search for ESSERS -E uh, data and information will come up about the federal funding, and there is a tab or link that says monthly expenditures. So you can go in and see a, a financial uh, statement and you can see what is budgeted and you can see what has been expended and you can see the balance. But the categories I, uh, I, I mentioned are very broad. So for example, you can say complex area plans uh, and it could be in the tens of millions of dollars for um, health and safety and maybe the, uh, you know a million dollars have been expended. So you really don't know specifically how these funds are being used. And um, so we keep, again, we as an ad advocacy organization continue to ask the department, you know, can you be more specific? We'd like more granular um, information about how uh, the schools are utilizing uh, these funds specifically to target learning loss. Well, is the report aligned with like the the budget or a p plan or does it stand alone um what what is how is it yes is it well, okay yes i know what you're asking <laughs> so 
the schools uh, every year uh, create uh, academic and financial plan for um, themselves. So each school does an academic and financial plan based on their students and their uh, community. And I think that has that process has been going along, you know, pre, during and post pandemic. I mean, we're still in a pandemic, um, but this process has continued as is. Um, but then the federal funding has been supplemental. So you would hope that uh, the continual or the, the plans that have been there uh, throughout or have been had a consistent process would align with the uh, federal uh, funding plans. Um, it's not, I'm not quite sure if they are. Uh, it seems like the federal funding did add another layer. And my understanding is the schools and the complexes had to come up with a federal funds plan, how they were going to use these funds. And I would imagine in some cases there is an alignment or there was an alignment in some cases, perhaps. So are not. you saying that that report is not, it is not designating the funding source? that these are these are the department's um, allocations from the state and then this is the federal funding and this well, is yeah the way they they're uh, reporting it is the federal funding is a standalone uh, uh, source and they're utilizing this standalone source for various initiatives so it's it is i think you can think of it as separate even though we would hope that it would be aligned with the normal process of how a school does its academic plan and budget so a parent um can go on and find s or e s s e r is the is the acronym for that elementary and secondary they, emergency. they secondary. could but it's not that easy to find <laughs> so yeah. actually a parent could find the academic and financial plan for each school that's on one part of the website mm -hmm. but then the s -er plan and funding is in another section on the website. So you do have to have some knowledge. It's not like one page where you can easily navigate. It's it's actually quite complicated. Well, it said that there's also a narrative that is due with it. So it, it says um, from what I read about what was required that um, it had the financial plan and then the narrative. Does it have a good narrative? I should have looked at. I didn't get a chance to look. At it. But so, is there enough narrative there to help uh, a, a reader know what it's about? What well, the department did uh, create a academic and financial plan. Actually, it was the board that directed the department to do this. Uh, the department at first came with a financial plan, which was difficult to understand. Um, and so the board told the department, you know, this is hard to understand. We need an academic plan. So how you are actually going to, or what is your plan for pro providing, you know, health and safety, ensuring health and safety, and also addressing learning loss and a correspo corresponding financial plan. So the board directed the department to do this and the department um, fulfilled that request. They did create a plan um, with the financials and the board did approve it. Now, um, we're not quite sure if they just created a narrative to match the financial plan that they had initially mm -hmm. or whether or not they truly created the academic plan and then connected the financials that would be needed to execute the academic plan. So that that we're not quite sure, but the department did come up with this plan. Um, I would say that it's it was still it is still difficult to understand exactly what the department is doing at the school level. So once again, they have very broad strategies. So I can name these strategies. You know, there's four of them. One is healthy. Uh, one is healthy habits, healthy schools. The other is action-oriented decision-making. Uh, the next one is responsive capacity building. And the last one is effective academic practices. So, All right, so those are the four system-wide strategies. Correct. 
And, but those are very broad. So we would like to know, so for example, action-oriented decision-making, action-oriented decision-making. What specific what? actions are, is the system or schools uh, um, executing or performing to really target uh, some of our struggling subgroups? I mean, that's the kind of um, information we would like to know. Uh, we haven't heard specifically what uh, schools are doing, or for example, if there's a particular school or schools that are using effective mm -hmm. data-driven uh, mm -hmm. actions that are really addressing all students or students uh, who are economically disadvantaged or the subgroups, um, we would hope that the department would be able to identify some of those and maybe be able to share them, or maybe they would look system wide and and see what common um, issues came up re with respect to the pandemic. Um, we hear about social emotional mental health issues. Uh, I would imagine, you know, even though students are individual, perhaps there would be common uh, issues regarding engagement. Uh, we would hope that the department would look at the system or have a systematic way of identifying some of these issues and solutions so that we could utilize our resources in the most effective way, you know, a systematic way. Um, but because we don't have this kind of detail, uh, we, we don't really know what to make of uh, the, these strategies. And, um, you know, it could be that each school is doing uh, what they think is best for their own situation, which is fine. It's just that we don't have unlimited resources. We have limited resources so that, so we would hope that the department would make the best use of the limited resources that we have. And, and we think that that is just having a systematic way of, a, a systematic approach uh, to, to addressing uh, the effects of the pandemic. Well, I found I had another descriptor in here that is supposed to be given to the the board, which is a quarterly educational metrics report. Yes, that contain, contained in. Have you seen that? Yes. This? Well, okay. um, so this is really interesting. Um, yes, they a department was required to do that, and they have presented to the board the beginning of the year and the middle of the year reports. So every school is supposed to have what they call a universal screener. And you mentioned that data, um, you mentioned the data from the screeners uh, at the beginning of the show, where you, I think you quoted that, you know, a certain amount of percent of students are not on grade level. Yes. So the screeners are able to assess students and this information is produced. So I've only seen the beginning and the middle of the year. Um, I think when I looked on the website, they did update it for the end of the year last year, but mm -hmm. they never presented that to the board. So it's on the website, but there wasn't a presentation to the board. So, uh, you know, and, and of course the data on the website, like if I was a parent and I just looked at this data, it is hard to, make sense of what the data is saying without a narrative or maybe looking at across years or um, some kind of explanation. So it is true that the department is posting the information as required, but I think stakeholders like um, um, Hey Coalition is really wanting a narrative and an explanation of what the department's analysis is of this. You know, if we would like to know is by looking at these interim, you know, snapshots, is the money that the federal government has provided as a supplement really helping? Um, we can't really tell, unfortunately. So one would expect then um, to have that the educational metrics report, that those metrics then would be reflecting the criterion that everybody's trying to reach like improvement in English language arts or in math issues. So, so that's, so those are all different. There's no, 
district wide metrics that everybody's trying to meet and well, that we know who is and who isn't. Yeah. So how does that work? Yeah. So this okay. is, uh, I think I've mentioned this before. So when the department was presenting their plan to the board, uh, a board member asked the superintendent, uh, what are your targets for the use of this, these funds? Uh, in, 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 with respect to these metrics, indicators, uh, academic achievement indicators or social emotional learning indicators. And mm -hmm. the superintendent said, oh, there were no targets, but rather he just wanted progress. So uh, it turns out that there are targets, although the department has not clearly pointed to them, uh, there are targets that the department has made to the federal government uh, long-term targets and interim targets, but mm -hmm. it doesn't seem like any of those targets were mentioned in the federal funding plan. Hmm. So to us, without clear targets and goals, it's yeah. hard to know if progress is being made because we don't know where we're trying to get to. Uh, so that's another question we've been asking the department can you clearly articulate what your outcomes your goals your targets uh, mm -hmm. even even if it's um if they don't think that if even if the targets maybe they're too aggressive need to be adjusted that's fine but we think that there needs to be clarity on what they're trying to get to uh because then I mean, right now, without any clear goals, we're not sure if these four strategies are really helping. Um, <laughs> uh, or, uh, yeah, we 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 were not we're not sure if um, our money is being well spent. I guess. Well, yeah, and I mean, it doesn't sound. Um, I don't want to say it's not coherent, but it doesn't seem like it's hanging together out of a frame framework of um, of. Um, guidance for it anyway it's not comprehensive I, anyway i wanted to say who's signing off on it so it's the so the board asked for it the department posts it and that's it there's no letter on there dear colleague you know this is what you've done and, <laughs> well, and, the, yeah. and, this is, and i sign off of it because i'm a board member in this well good. so um actually um i think the results from last year's smarter balance assessment um, will be reported usually it happens in october so we're hoping that there will be uh, a meeting in october to review the results now one thing that is different this year um, this time is that the board has uh, um, contracted uh, the national association of state boards Net of boards of education, yes. the acronym is NASB, and mm -hmm. they're helping the depart, uh, the board create a strategic plan. And it's the first time that the board is taking responsibility to create a strategic plan. So there have been some trainings with board members that are open to the public uh, that have been very um, useful for uh, people like us or advocacy organizations like us, because we're seeing the process being uh, done you know, in real time. And I, I am, uh, I believe that um, in October there will be a session with all of the DOE data, student achievement data, and I think this would be very um, informative for the public to uh, attend and um, you know pay attention to, because well, hopefully we'll get more, hopefully we'll get more specific specifics on you know where we need to focus right now it seems very general like we know that there's been learning loss and we know that we have these four strategies that the department mm -hmm. is utilizing but uh we we believe that we need more uh specific so could you say that the, the four pillars then um they're you they're not and i i i guess i should uh, anyway they are operationally defined ordinarily those would be operationally defined and those would be translated into as you say those indicators targets or and the and metrics then the metrics matched up with them so that's something maybe they're learning with the nas nasb work with that nasb well great. hopefully we will have targets so that the strategies can work toward those targets right now i mean perhaps the department internally has these targets but 
we haven't been informed about them. Well, it's just good to know that you all are um, looking there and and uh, overseeing what they're doing. To uh, you're not overseeing it, but you're uh, tracking it so that we can make some sense out of it. Because my other question um, was about how you tend to look also at other examples of school systems that are similar, have features that are of interest to Hawaii's work. Yes, I. I have been looking at um, other districts that are a similar size to Hawaii, and uh, I do learn a lot from their processes. Uh, it seems like uh, they, uh, the districts are more transparent on their process of how to do a strategic plan, what their goals are, mm -hmm. uh, the strategies then tie into how they're um, you know, trying to make progress to those goals. So mm -hmm. we would encourage the Hawaii Department of Education not to copy because we every district is different, but maybe take a look at those processes so that it's clear to the public and we can make the connections, a logical connection on how on, on what the department's trying to do so we can better support our students. Yes, that's very good. I also saw that uh, it was reported that the teacher union president was asking um, about the superintendent Hayashi's role in the process and that he was um, implying that, or maybe directly stating that it was the superintendent's work that brings that money down into the schools and makes things happen more expeditiously. What, how, how is that superintendent's role working for the benefit? Of well, I do agree with the union and that the superintendent can make a lot of things happen. Um, I, again, we don't have all of the details to know and so i guess our and we are consistent we want more transparency we want to understand um what's going on at the school level more specifically and yes we do believe that money should get down to the schools because that's where the students are and the schools are doing uh you know the the the, the work and uh we feel that that's where the support needs to be. Mm -hmm. Well, I noticed in the write-up from the feds that these funds, very generous funds, are use it or, or lose it funds. So that you've got to use the funds by the deadlines that they're placing on them. So in other words, the latest one would be September, 2024. I mean, that's really only two, I mean, less than two years away, right? Yes. So does it appear to you that they're moving in the direction to be organized and operationalized enough to use all of this money? Well, I just took a look at some of the um, the, the last monthly report and, and for some um, categories or line items, we are far away from spending down that money. So um, I'm not sure, uh, we hope that processes are in place to get the monies down to the school level as we would hope. Mm -hmm. um, from some of these uh, snapshots of the financials, it seems like we've spent a little money, um, but that there's still a long way to go for some of these line items. Well, do you think that there's, um, do, do you think that there would be any um, spontaneous <laughs> <laughs> ways of, I mean, like buy, buying more teachers or buying more um, assistance for the classroom? I mean, is there that? Is it moving along really bureaucratically, or do you see that there are there open discussions about uh, other alternatives? I could... think um, the department has recently hired a couple of deputy superintendents. So now mm -hmm. there are three deputy superintendents, mm -hmm. and I believe it is their charge to help maybe operationalize some of uh, the processes. So we'll see. Um, Okay. Maybe on the next time I can yes. give you an update, uh, Stephanie, and we can continue this conversation. Well, good. I I had I was going to ask you for any recommendation you have for those who are responsible for moving this along, and I think you've made several. And uh, one of them, uh, you know, is about the transparency part of it because we would ourselves, teachers and parents and grandparents, would like to go take a look at it and be able to understand what what seems to be happening with the. Uh, with these funds and how it's going to make a difference for the the students but we're getting out of time and we still have <laughs> to say so we, we will have to say more. well i think that um 
you know, our, our organization uh, continues to advocate for, you know, a simple way to, um, for the department to communicate to parents and community members on what's going on. So uh, hopefully with our advocacy, uh, there will be some streamlining of, of communication processes so that, you know, for example, we don't have to search the website all over <laughs> to find right. the information that we need. Well, and um, also suffice, um, give some information or, or build the confidence of teachers and parents who are reporting in the media that they don't see any changes at the school. They don't see where any of this is coming in to make a difference for um, the student's achievement. So so that's that's a question as and they would well be well you could serve them well by giving them some help on getting agree them. agree yeah. yeah but we're out of time so um i'm your host uh stephanie stoll dalton for the state of the state of hawaii and we've been discussing hawaii students learning loss from covid deprivations and the federal resources that are here in the state to restore schools and um student achievement and I thank Dr. Sherry Nakamura for discussing these serious education issues in ways that uh, our bureaucracies, agencies, and those responsible are trying to make a difference with uh, the generous funding. Um, we'll join us again in two weeks. Mahalo to all of the viewers and uh, aloha, everybody. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.